a TED. Um, this is just a follow-up from our lesson today. Um, I know that I'm going to be seeing you on Wednesday. Um, um, so you don't have very much time to deal with this before then. Um, the piece I'd like you to look at, of course, is the Imperial March, which is also a grade five piece. Um, but the, the technical thing that I want you to do is, and you need to start thinking about this, um, to get your single tongue. You mentioned that your, your tonguing is not very fast. And the reason for that, just to outline again, is that you tend to stop your notes with your tongue. You tend to go, um, you tend to, to shut the note off at the end with the tongue instead of, and the idea is that you don't have to stop the sound. You just allow the, the, the sound just to, 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 you basically, you don't shut the, the note off with your tongue. You don't use your tongue as like a cork at the end to kind of da to do that. And the exercise we did together, which is just on any, any given note, is a little bit like, um, like that um, Spass uh, and a Zunge, I think it's called, um, uh, the German title of it. Oh, it's in your in your book of exercises you can do something like that but not beginning quite as low but all you need to do is confine yourself to middle register so you can start on a middle g and quite slowly you produce a series of a very smooth joined together notes and you can do eight or nine of them like this So you don't go, you don't produce that very staccato sounding kind of articulation, but you produce a long, smooth series of notes like this. And you can then go up the scale. interrupting the note with your tongue you're just literally articulating you're just as if you're singing da, 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 like that so um, you'll find that sometimes you don't um, you can't hear the note being articulated you need to listen very carefully what you do so you do uh, to what you're doing so you do actually hear beginnings of notes like this continue up to D. So you can hear I'm playing very smoothly, but definitely um, a, a, a series of repeated um, quavers. Um, and when you've done that, do the whole thing again coming down. So we can just etc. all the way back down to a G. And don't attempt to go higher than a D, don't attempt to go lower than a G. So the notes are G, A, B, C and D. And you're aiming to produce um, a very level sound and you need to um, just, as I say, da, 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 like that, so that the notes don't, you don't interrupt the sound with the tongue, you don't stop the air flowing with the tongue. Um, if what's actually happening uh, is that when you when you begin a note, you kind of strike the note with the beginning of the tongue. But what you tend to do, which you shouldn't do, is you then use the tongue. The tongue comes back to stop the note at the end. And this exercise is very good for for just teaching you how to use a softer start to the tongue. And then um, you'll find that. All these technical pieces that we played today, I can't remember the names of the pieces, but uh, uh, the two pieces that weren't the Star Wars piece, uh, the Philip Spark um, pieces, uh, when you've got 
fast repeated semiquavers. This softer tongue, we, we then, you'll find it. This is the kind of approach that you've got at the moment, but if you can go you'll find that um, you're able to play for quite a lot longer than you can play at the moment and you'll also be able to play smoother um, and you'll also be able to play more rapidly without using quite so much energy. So that's really the, the next technical aim I would recommend that you go for. Um, as for taking your grade five, I reckon there's nothing to stop you from doing it this term. It's just a question of uh, speaking to your parents, um, possibly um, finding out which sort of um, grade five you should take, whether you should do the, the grade five in front of an examiner, or you do your three pieces, um, you do oral tests, scales and sight reading, or whether you do the the sort of practical, I can't remember if it's practical or performance, they call it, where you can play your three pieces and then an own choice fourth piece of grade five standard. Um, and then you record it and somebody has to be there to make sure that you do it in one go. You don't edit the recording. Um, and that can be submitted to the ABRSM and it can be marked remotely. And that's quite a flexible way of doing it. Although quite a few people still prefer to do the in-person exams because they impose a sort of discipline on you. And also it does make sure that you learn your scales and um, you get to sight read as well. Um, okay, um, this is a rather long video, but it gives you something to, to think about um, over the next couple of weeks um, when you come to practice. Um, there's no need to always warm up when you practice. Um, when you start, uh, don't start too low, don't start too high, and also play long notes and listen to the quality of what you're doing. Don't play too loud or too quiet. Better to play quieter than louder, but always kind of mezzo piano, mezzo forte, something like that. What I do is I start in the middle of the instrument. I start on a C. very carefully to the quality of the sound that I'm making um, and that's very important when you warm up um, and then I take it a little bit higher and a little bit lower but um, I suggest that you don't play up above an F when you start but you just begin on a C up and down and return to the C and then the next thing you do is you go up to the F and you go down a little bit like this um, so this um, introduces playing long notes with the legato tongue. Each note, each one of those notes, I began with the tongue. I didn't slur any of them um, because it's very important to get your production working at the beginning like this, which is basically how you begin notes, how you produce them. And then it's a good idea to do a couple of slurs. You've got some already in your book, quite good ones as well. Your previous teacher has given you the right sort of ones to look at, but they need to go something like this. And when you do the slur, the idea is that you play them slowly and as, uh, as, uh, in as much control as you possibly can. So you're in charge of when they move. Obviously, the upward slurs are harder. Uh, there's a little bit of technique we can cover on that to help you do those. Um, but when you return to the note that you started on, you hold it for a little bit and listen. It's all about listening and listening to the quality of the sound you make. 
Okay, this is a kind of 10 minute uh, uh, tutorial really, but it's just giving you a few ideas. Um, and when you practice, uh, which you should be doing about quarter of an hour, 20 minutes each day now, if you possibly can. Um, and it's very important that you practice little, but often, okay? You don't have to practice a great deal on the trumpet. Um, don't want to get into trouble by uh, giving you an easy way out here, but the, pr the, the piano is an instrument and violin is an instrument that you have to spend a lot of time practicing in intensive sessions. Um, if you learn the trumpet, you basically have to do small amounts, but very, very often, okay? Because it's like training rather than like practice. You have to, to make sure that you play regularly, okay? Because that's the best way that we build muscle and we build control. Um, and the, playing the trumpet is all about that rather than uh, playing lots and lots of notes and learning lots of notes. It's largely about gaining control over the instrument, learning to make a good sound, um, and learning to increase the range of notes that we have. And uh, the best way of doing that, because we're dealing with muscles here that we're not using in everyday life, other than to stop ourselves from dribbling and for, from, you know, and to smile and to, um, and, and to do things other than play the trumpet. But to play the trumpet, you've got to, to do a lot of work on these muscles around here. Um, and the only way to do that is to play little and often. Okay, so maybe 20 minutes a day, um, if you can, a six, seven days a week, that's the best way of doing it. Um, and as you get better, you'll probably find that you want to do more than one session a day, that you do two quarter of an hour or two 20 minute sessions a day uh, towards um, uh, uh, doing exams. Anyway, this um, should give you a few pointers as to how to go forwards. Um, Hopefully you've got time to watch this and to give it some thought in the next couple of weeks. Okay, bye.